Listening to two guys you don't know. Yeah, you download this like a bitch to our show. And you email us creepy things that sound gay. You should know we love you anyway. Cause we're yog and we're pod, we suck and we blow We're bigger than God, it's time for the show Who's no first this song, I sing like a mong We fight about games, our glasses have frames Yog, the listeners all of the work Ugh, pod, Simon just acts like a book Ugh, we're yog and we're pod, we suck and we blow we're bigger than God, it's time for the show. We used to be in a guild run by goons. We made videos about fights no one knows. Used to raid with puppies, now we play Left for Dead. You should know how to shoot zombies in the head Cause we're yog and we're pod, we suck and we blow We're bigger than God, it's time for the shoe Who's no first this song, I sing like a mong We fight about games, our glasses have frames Yog, Lewis does all of the work Pod. Simon just acts like a book Ugh. We yog and we pod We suck and we blow We're bigger than God It's time for the shoe Someone wrote these lyrics And they barely scan over the song Oh God, is this matter? I can't make up my mind just singing the theme song to the show. Cause we're yog and we're pod, we suck and we blow. We're bigger than God, it's time for the show. Oops, no first this song, I sing like a mong. We fight about games, our glasses have brains. Yog, Lewis does all of the work. Oops. Pod, Simon just acts like a book Ook, cause we yog and we pod We suck and we blow We're bigger than God It's time for the shoe That was Mochi With Yog and Pod A cover of the Katy Perry song Hot and Cold Especially and exclusively for the Yog Pod If any of our other listeners out there would like to cover a popular song, especially for the Yogpod, adding their own special lyrics about the special Yogpod special, 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 <laughs> special, then please send <laughs> send your MP3s to yogscast at gmail.com. Thank you, yes. That's special. Good. That's a good idea. Um, I don't know what happened there. I just, I just, I went a little bit Spanced mad. out. Yeah, you did. Special! What, what kind of things do you want them to cover? Classical stuff, or like classic rock, classic pop, metal? Um, what, what styles do you want? Maybe something by Queen. Something, you know, something slightly camp, I think, works in your favour. I mean, everyone knows someone who's in a band. So if you've got like a local band, you know, and you play like cover, you must play covers of some popular songs. So you know how to play them. Green Day. Right? Anything, just if you play an instrument, if you play the recorder, do a little recorder tune, and then like sing some yog pod related lyrics. It doesn't have to be long. Uh, any anything is good, right? It can be about the Queen. It can be about the Jaffa cakes. It can be anything, even barely related. We want to hear it and we want to play it. Okay, so send it in. Let me tell you a little story about something that happened today. <laughs> All right. Yes. What is it? Let me. 
Okay. <laughs> this is so fake. All right. Go on then. <laughs> oh, you tell your story. <laughs> Go on then. I'm just setting it up. Are you sitting comfortably? <laughs> then let me begin. So I've been up the street and I'm walking home. I've got a little bag of shopping that contains a load of cigarettes and a sandwich from the bakers. The cigarettes aren't from the bakers, the sandwiches. Sorry. Yep. Yep. Just to clarify that. So I'm walking down the street and I notice that there's there's a little bit of something that I like to term continental drift or subcontinental drift rather. Okay. Something below the equator has moved. And I'm like, "Oh, what's what's going on? What's going on?" And before I know it, my boxer shorts have completely slipped down my body, right? Whoa, 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 <laughs> my jeans are still on, right? What? My jeans are still on, but somehow my boxers just slipped off. And I'm like walking down the street with this amazing feeling of freedom <laughs> as my, my, um, I have to put this subtly, my, um, my my sausage roll and <laughs> oh no no oranges my sausage roll Your and banana that and two oranges from... in a bag <laughs> was that right the one which we were using oh right yeah yeah that's 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 a bit more complimentary so my banana and my two oranges have have completely they freed themselves from the confines of my boxer shorts um my jeans are still in place perfectly normally. <laughs> I don't even know how this happened. How can this happen? It was, I think it was God. Something magical. <laughs> Something magical occurred, Lewis. <laughs> As I was walking. I don't know why. It was just so weird. You know, I'm just, I'm walking and I think, what, what's going, what's going on? Oh. Oh. <laughs> it was so odd. It was so odd. This is a mysterious story of mystery and intrigue. But have you been like, doing your boxer shorts on like a hot wash and like the elastic's just gone a bit like and it you know it doesn't elastify well I mean that's a possibility well. or have you lost weight I don't think that I'd have lost weight um, so possibly your boxer shorts are a bit loose on you and they just sort of slip down but I mean they didn't like come off completely did they and like come out the end of your trouser leg <laughs> <laughs> that, I don't even know how that's possible how would that happen because you've got both your legs through it you can't there's no way. There's no. There's no possible way that that could happen. <laughs> it was so weird, though. I felt like I was naked. I felt like I was nude. But well, that's an amazing story. If any yogurts have a story as exhilarating as that, <laughs> yogscast at gmail dot com. Please keep it to yourself. Please <laughs> keep it to yourself. Or I mean, if I you have an explanation for what might have happened. Um... Yeah, what happened? Know. What happened? Did someone cast a spell on me or something? What was going on? What was that all about? I mean, I'm glad it wasn't the other way round. My trousers just whoop, like a slide whistle went off. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, it was so weird though. Have you never had that happen to you? No, I've never had anything well, even can, close to that. I can't imagine it's something that happens. No, it was so weird. So it's the weird. kind of thing that might happen in like Eureka or something, you know, or in Stargate Atlantis. In Fringe, <laughs> Walters Fringe. examining his underpants. <laughs> I need to uh. take these underpants back to my lab. <laughs> Is that your Walter impression? Yeah, that's my Walter Lovely. impression. It's really good. It's really good. I was impressed. Hello and welcome to TV. Hannah, have you have you done your cooking Hello. segment? Is it ready to go? It is. I've got to find it in my book. Okay. But yes, it's it is time for go. Hannah's cooking segment. It is time for Hannah's cooking segment. Hannah's cooking segment. Hannah's cooking segment. It is time for Hannah's cooking.
fucking segment? <laughs> <laughs> That's the best jingle I think I've ever heard. Wow. This is high praise. <laughs> oh. We have high hopes for this segment, Hannah. Oh, God. I don't know now. They're not disappoint us. Try and make it funny as well. You can't make it funny. What yeah, do I look like? I know, I was reaching a bit there. Oh, man. Oh. Do it in a funny voice. No. Do it a Welsh accent. <laughs> can can't you're Welsh. do a Welsh accent. We've tried this. Yes, you can. You're really I can only do it when it. I'm trying to do, like, a Russian accent. Or we'll try and do a Russian so accent. Again. Hello. Santa's oh, cooking Russian. segment. Oh, no, it's Terry Wogan. Oh, it always happens. <laughs> always happens. Firstly, you're going to need a pen and paper. Okay. So, go and get one. So, pause the yog pod now. <laughs> and never play it again. Just leave it like that. <laughs> Quit washing your head. <laughs> okay, you're oh back. God. Right, okay. So, you've got your pen and paper. Firstly, you're going to need baking parchment. What? And string. What the fuck is what that? What is that? What is baking parchment? I've never heard Grease of that in my life. Paper. Fine. Okay. Greaseproof paper. Do you know the way, you know in the in the supermarkets you've got where the tin foil and the cling film shit is? There's something that looks like paper in a roll that's usually called grease, greaseproof paper, baking paper. Ah, or yes, like greaseproof paper. Something okay. else. Yep. Yes. Yep. As... You need that and you need some string. Some string? But don't have string with anything on it. What kind yes. of string? Cause this is complicated. You need paper and string. Paper, pa- to cook. No, hang on, hang on, hang on. Could you use? This is ridiculous. Can you use the baking parchment as the paper that you're making notes on? No. <laughs> well, you could, but it might get shit on it. Um, by shit I mean Thai sauce. It'd be useful though if you served it in a restaurant and people are like, "Oh, this is really nice. Can I have the recipe for this?" And then you just smile wryly and you point at the also, baking paper. The paper, like sometimes, will crackle and like just break at the top, so you wouldn't be able to do that. It'd be like an old treasure map. So we've got some string. I mean, what kind of string? Is this the sort of string your dad has always has a roll of? It's like white. It's no. the drawer. He no. brings it out and ties like doors open with it and stuff. I'm sorry. You don't want anything. <laughs> Me, don't... What? My house is pretty much held together by string. He ties doors open with string. Oh God. Yeah, What's wrong with the much. door stop? Everything's tied. Together with string. You can't. Well, you can't use DIY string. If you know, like the blue, the blue covered string and shit like that, don't use that because it will come off, go in the sauce, and you will probably die. Um, just get. It's baking yeah, yeah. String. It's, it's going. Baking string. <laughs> baking string. Is that in the cooking section as well, along with the cling film and the baking parchment? Buy some baking parchment <laughs> and some baking yarn. Okay, just plain go on, go string on, will do. Just don't get covered shit, varnish shit, whatever it's called. You will also need some red Thai curry paste, um, some root ginger, which is usually in all the supermarkets now, but if not, get dried stuff. Works just as well. Um, uh, are we talking about root ginger as in the really knobbly vegetables yes. you actually yeah. buy in the vegetable section? And it, it freezes but quite you... well. Okay, so uh, we've bought a knob so... of ginger. Um, I believe that is the correct term. Yeah. <laughs> a knob. You can just stick break a, a bit stick off. Stick a knob of ginger up your ass. That's the recipe. <laughs> <laughs> Tie it with some string so that if it gets lost, you can just tug it and it comes back out. Carry on, man. Sorry, we'll oh, cut God. this. We'll cut sorry, all this out. Sorry, go on. Sorry. Right, so we've got the root ginger. Hot fish stock. I'll give you the exact amounts in a bit because I can't be asked right now. Um, coconut cream. You can get half fat coconut cream if you want to watch your weight. If not, just go with the full fat. It tastes exactly the same. Um, and then two fillets of some sort of fish, salmon or cod. What's the name of this dish that people will it's called, be preparing? It's called Thai fish in a bag. Thai fish in a bag. Yeah. That sounds delicious. Could you not have come up with a more eloquent name. I mean, if you were serving it to the Queen, I what would you call it, Helen? Not in a bag, because you're supposed to serve it in a bag. If not, you could do like a, a Thai green curry with salmon. So this is a very highbrow dish, then. It's in good housekeeping. <laughs> this is for the Yogdorts who are looking for a more refined palate. You need to call it something. Fish name it bag. after yourself. Delicious. Call it, you know, Hannah's Hot Haddock. Lombag. Lombag. Hannah's Hot Haddock. Yeah. <laughs> 
Hannah's hot haddock. I like that more than lob bag. Hannah's hot haddock. Mm. It's okay. So we got our we've got our knob of ginger. We got a little jar of red curry paste. We got some coconut cream in a tin. We got two fillets of fish. Okay. Are you writing this down? Yeah. Of course I am. Everyone should be. All the yognauts should be writing this down. I've emailed you. No, listen. This is for the yognauts' benefit. I want everyone. I want all yognauts to try and make this and give us feedback. All right, on what it was like. I can promise you. Someone has already gotten laid thanks to this really? dish. Really? And it wasn't me. Who was it? Totes. Totes. Totes' his first, totes his first meal he cooked for his girlfriend, I you were which his wasn't first, an omelette. First sex. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, probably was. Uh, Let's not go there. Half a yellow pepper, a carrot, some broccoli, and a bit hold of on, coriander, hold on, hold on. and a Half lime. a yellow pepper. I'm trying to write this down. I can't write Half it. a yellow pepper. Yep. Coriander. A carrot. A carrot. One carrot. Could you try and could you try and talk mm. like um Nigella Lawson? No. Yeah. First, you need a lovely thick stick of ginger. Oh, I believe the technical term term is a knob. Oh. And you take your knob and you pop it gently into the warmly bubbling fish stock. Actually, oh. you've got to grate it. Sorry. Oh, yeah. oh God. So, okay, let's just Sorry, start Hannah. the... Sorry. So, there's extra ingredients. Half a yellow pepper, coriander... Please, yeah. let's just start the start beginning. Game. It's getting silly Both now. Okay. ingredients. Um, hang on. And a cooking segment! Sorry, that's the new jingle. <laughs> <laughs> what? Was that the cookie monster? It sounded like him. Yeah. He's the cooking monster, Lewis. The uh, cooking monster. Clever. Don't want to get into legal trouble. He's got to be called that. Oh, no, cooking segment. Right, Oh, no, okay. cookie. Sorry. Do sorry, I have to... Go <laughs> do I... <laughs> so, sorry, go on, go on. Do I have to do the bag and string bit again? Or have we got that? Have we, have we established just, that? Just go through the list of ingredients. The full list of ingredients in a very refined way. So people have a chance to write Right, them okay. Okay, you will need red Thai curry paste. You need um, a quarter of a tablespoon. One and a quarter centimetres worth of root ginger grated. It's a oh. bit precise. But you can freeze the rest of the ginger and just, like, ignore it for a year and it'll be fine. Um, or it'll grow mould, which is what happened to ours and we had to throw it out. Um, Lovely. Fifth, Lovely. Yes. Thanks for adding fifth, that. That's put me right in the mood for your delicious food. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Maybe we should just say, if you want the recipe and you're too retarded to write down... No, no! You can email us. Oh. Oh. Yeah, and then we can send the, the recipe. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. We could just do a, a tiny URL.com slash Hannah's cooking segment. Yes, but I don't have anyone to host or it. Mulchie steals it. Yeah. yeah. Would replace it with goatsy. <laughs> <laughs> People will be looking at it thinking, is, is that where I put the ginger? <laughs> 50 ml of hot fish stock, 100 ml of coconut cream. There is half fat coconut cream now available in shops. Um, it tastes exactly the same. Because uh, this is a pretty fatty meal. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Whatever fish you want. It's got to be skinless. Could you um, fish fingers? Half a yellow... No. Could you, though? Fish cake? No, no, no. Could you use fish fingers, though? Could you Could you use fish yes. fingers? Yes. Okay. Yes. So that's optional. And you can use them from frozen. This recipe, you can use the fish from frozen. It still will cook it. Okay. Excellent. Frozen fish fingers it is. So if you want fish fingers... Okay. Uh, half a yellow pepper, finely sliced. A carrot cut into strips. Okay. And 75 grams of broccoli, which is cut into small florets, so sort of your normal bite size amount. Um, coriander and lime to serve if you want it, you don't have to. And also some rice of some description, possibly jasmine rice. Jasmine, so jasmine rice. Ooh. Or sticky rice. Anything like that will work. Okay, yep, good. It's just quite rich, so you want something with. So you're preheating the oven to right, okay. 200 degrees C or, well, it depends on what your oven is. If you've got, I'm hitting the thing, if you've got a 
fan assisted oven, it's 180 degrees C. Otherwise, it's gas mark 6 or 200 Can degrees C. Can you deep C. fat fry it? That's what I'm no. interested in. No. Because my mate James, he's got this amazing deep fat fryer. And oh, we heard about the chips. Really nice chips. Could you serve it with chips? Could you have this? Yes. <laughs> so you can have fish fingers <laughs> with a piece of ginger stuck up them, <laughs> covered in paste, <laughs> served with chips. In a bag. Yeah. <laughs> with string tied around <laughs> it. <laughs> oh, and if, if I give this to a lady that I'm courting, she'll just automatically want to engage in sexual congress pretty much me. so let's let hannah just let hannah finish off the recipe uh the cooking style okay, sorry. and then you can take the okay. fish yeah so you've oh, you've preheated your oven just leave that um and you want to fry your curry paste and the, the ginger which you have grated up and peeled don't put the skin in um in the put it in the pan for about a minute okay. don't put any oil in because the ginger should like and the paste should sort themselves out. You then want to add the coconut cream and the stock and mix it all up. Mm. Um, and once it's mixed well, you want to put it in a jug and cool it slightly. Um, just sort of leave it on the side. Uh, right, so whilst that's cooling, you then want to cut out two squares, which are 36 or more centimetres along each side. Oh, right, okay. And two pieces cut of string, which are... What? The parchment thing. Oh right, okay. About. Sorry, I should have said thirty thirty six. Thirty six centimeters. I would go a little bit. Yes, I would. Well, the 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 thing says thirty five point five, but that's a bit silly. You might need a ruler for this. Yeah. I when I did it, I went slightly bigger with the, the bag size because. Otherwise, tying it can be a bit of a pain. Well, it depends how many fish fingers you have to put in the bag. I mean, if you you're hungry, leave... I guess you want to go up to three, maybe. <laughs> yeah. You have to leave a space above the fish as well, so you have to account for that, which is why you want quite a big size bag. Parchment thing. Do you just pull the stock into this bag? Yes. Stuff? I'm getting that. I'm getting that. Oh. Sorry, sorry, sorry. What you then need to do... Okay, so you've you've got your... You've cut out some cubes, some squares yes, of, of parchment. Yes, and you've cut okay, two, two pieces of string, okay. which are about 31 centimetres or more. Okay. Again, very precise, oh, but... Oh, God, it's so precise. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> you need a ruler. Make sure you buy a ruler <laughs> at the uh, at Asda when you're buying all this. Now what yeah. you need to do is you need to get your protractor out and your compass, and you need to draw a 62-degree angle on the parchment. This will allow you to calculate the trajectory of the fish as it is placed inside the bag. I think it would be quite nice. If you're doing this for two people, you could, like, put people's names on the bag. No, I think that would be a nice touch. Yeah. So it burns. You could, like, decorate it with art. You could draw, like, no. a little willy on it. Um, you don't really for want you, to be doing love. anything yeah, with the bag. A of a willy. How do we make the bags? I'm sorry, I haven't really understood right. that part. Yes, okay. Well, stop talking then. You get so a bowl, two, you get two bowls, oh, right, two yes. cereal bowls, right? And you place the the parchment in each of the bowls and push down gently. So you basically got a bowl that's lined with paper. Okay. Then what you do with that is you cut your fish or fish fingers uh -huh. into. It says here four pieces for the one fillet. So. Cut a fish finger in half, maybe. <laughs> um. <laughs> My God. <laughs> Have you got any potato waffles? Can you put like a half potato <laughs> waffle in there as well, just to pad it out? <laughs> oh, man. Right, so you put that in, and then you fill the bowls with ca the carrots, broccoli, and peppers, um, putting half in each, and then you put the fish over the top of that. And then you pour half of the liquid into each bowl. Are these raw? Are these raw carrots and broccoli and peppers? Yeah. It all cooks. Okay. This is the and beauty you... of it. It will all come out cooked. So you pop in your fish fingers first, then you pop in your raw f your raw veg into this bowl. No, no, no. You put, you put the veg in, then you put the fish on top oh, of right. that. Oh, right. Okay, okay. Sorry. Um, your frozen fish fingers, obviously. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, I mean... And I, then you I, pour I, half of the liquid. It's not... I don't think it's that easy to cut a frozen fish finger in half. You might have to use some uh, pliers, You can snap some, it. Some, like, hedge... What are they called? Wire cutters. If you have any of those. A chainsaw. Use a chainsaw. Okay, yes. Do it in style. Or just a knife, you know. 
They're only little things. That's what she said. And then you pour the liquid on it. Half of the liquid in each bowl. Okay. Because the, the idea is it steams the everything with the liquid. And you get a nice concentrated liquid at the end. Like that's the sauce. Instead of just cream with shit in it. Okay, so you've got your veg, your fish fingers, and it, and then your sort of concentrate the sauce bosh yes. on the top. Right. What you then okay. need to do is you take the corners of the bar, uh, the bear, the baking parchment, and basically make it into a parcel. But you need to make sure that you've got about two and a half centimeters above the fish. That's that's just basically space because it needs it for the steam to get out and stuff. So explain to me this parcel thing. So we've got our parchment in the bowl. We put the other piece of parchment over it, do we? And then we sort of just what, fold it no! over the bowl as well? No! Oh, God. No, you have one piece of parchment in one bowl. Okay. You have another bowl with another piece in, and you've, like, pressed them in, so all the stuff is on top of this parchment. And you then, like, take the corners that are sticking out and tie them together. So you've got a bag sitting in a bowl, basically. With another bowl on top of it? No, there's no other bowl. What? You've got two bowls with two bags. What do you mean there's two bowls with two bags? What, so you've got four pieces of parchment? What? Oh, what? No. Okay, so no, sorry, 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 sorry. No, two pieces of parchment. So what you're saying is you get the piece of parchment that's in the bowl and you tie the four corners together at the top tightly, like a stalk's package. Like a package yes. coming from the stalk. You know what I mean? What that yes. looks like. Yeah. But you want to leave a tiny. It does. You want to leave a tiny little hole so that the steam can okay, escape. Okay, so you don't want to tie it up like too tight. But I guess up. if you're doing it like that, you can't really tie it. But up. you don't want to tie it up too loose. Not too loose. Not too tight. Okay. Okay. Couldn't you just tie it up really tight and make a tiny little hole in the bag? No. That's probably what I'd do. No, because the bag will splinter and break. Oh dear. Because under high heat, the the bark the barking parchment, the baking mm -hmm. parchment, the barking. um, yeah. it like shatters. So the top bits that are quite burnt will like shatter off, which is why you can serve it at the table in the bag, but it's a bit iffy, because you don't want bag in your food, do you? Uh, well, it depends. Okay. Well, I mean, thanks, Hannah. I, I mean, I, di I mean, the idea of this segment was really so uh, we could give yognauts a simple but effective recipe to try uh, on, on their own and report back. So if anyone has managed to follow this recipe uh, and is and you know has a chance to give it a go, good cool. luck and uh, get back to us. Um, Yogscast at gmail dot com. Yeah, we want to hear from you. You do realise that they haven't got a cooking time yet, so it's not actually cooked. Oh. Um, How long do you pop them in the oven for? Uh, you put them in for fifteen to twenty minutes. Fifteen to twenty minutes in the bag. You take you take the bag out. What you put it on a plate? Yes. I assume we'll we could do it in a microwave. Like bowl. This instead of no. like um, baking. No. God no! It relies on steaming, so no. Yeah, you can do that in the microwave. I've done it plenty of times. Okay, guys. Um, we want pics of your failed attempts or good attempts. Oh god, pictures of it would be incredible. I'll do a picture of mine. <clears throat> we would like pictures of you of. Oh. of you know. I've got to, I've got to buy some broccoli okay. and some peppers, <clears throat> but I will do one and I'll put it on Twitter. Hello, you are listening to the Yolk Pod. Hello. So I'm just looking through the Yolk's Cast email because I think I hate. The fact that this show is like turning into stuff that's sent just sent by the fans, but there's such a lot of stuff they've sent since it's last good. time that I kind of have to. Like, it's not get like we've got anything else to talk about, is it? No. Uh, so and we get some really good quality emails, don't we? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we've got some amazing, amazing correspondence over the months. Uh, there was that guy who said that he wanks over us 16 hours a day. Um, there's that person whose brother put a sheet over him and scared him. Oh yeah, Eric Frost. All good stuff. He he emailed again, although you told him not to, didn't oh, you? Oh God! Remember, you said never email. I think again, I did. Eric. Yeah, I banned him. He's emailed I banned again. him from the show because you banned him because he'd beaten up his little brother, and now he's trying to sort of make up excuses. So he said, 
I only stated that he was driven to the hospital. I did not state that it was my fault that he got beaten up so bad. He's saying he tripped over and twisted his ankle and had to go to the hospital. That that's what did he what did he trip over? His brother's foot or something <laughs> at the top of the stairs. <laughs> and that sort of that uh, that black eye, you know, came when he when he hit when he fell down the stairs. Yeah, mm. walked into a door. That's the old one. Sounds like a sort of battered wife sort of story. In Yogpod 21, you thank Joris for his donation. I was listening to it as me and him were doing a ZG together. Oh, God. And heard his name come up. I was annoyed that my name wasn't mentioned because it was me that introduced him to your awesome videos way back in December. So if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't have had that donation. Well, how the fuck am I supposed to know that? How am I supposed to know that? The fucking automated email comes through to me saying that someone's donated. It doesn't say, oh, you know, his mate told him to do this exactly. or whatever. I mean, how I can't take the blame for that. I cannot take the blame for... Fuck you. What's his name again? It's, it's in my What's comment. Name? It's this. <laughs> what? What kind of a name's that? I know, I don't know how to pronounce it either. Bart Hidgemans. <laughs> Fuck you, Bart Hidgemans. <laughs> Hidgemans. Is he uh, Dutch? I, I think he so. He might be Dutch or something. I mean, what the fuck is it with people with weird names emailing us? This this one's... I mean, these things I'm getting these... Loads of Europeans listen to us. It's a good thing. This guy... They love us, Europeans. Sent me... And I love them. Apart from Bart Hidgemans. Fuck you, I don't like you. This guy said... I like your friend who gave us money, but I don't like you. Joris. Yeah. I hope the raptor never <laughs> drops in Zul Grub. Sorry, go on. The... Go on. This guy called Otar Gislason has sent me about a three-page email <laughs> explaining evolution to me. <laughs> Otar Gislason has sent you a three-page email about evolution. Pretty Amazing. much. Does he make any analogies to balloons? Uh... Uh, no, he's just sort of... He's drawn lots of diagrams using equal signs and arrows and square brackets and things. <laughs> he's got a picture of a dinosaur and then an equal sign and then there's a picture of a man. <laughs> <laughs> like a little arrow. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, he's... I, I mean, I'm not really sure I can read through all this, but... No, I'd rather you didn't. The first slide says, Evolution happens incredibly slowly and gradually. And... I. That's pretty much how his email goes as well. So, <laughs> thank you. Oh, Otar. dear. Well, I mean, it's good that people want to email us and that they're doing so. Um, I just wish the quality of the emails was somewhat better. <laughs> <laughs> Other people have emailed us with an absolutely, like, the, the most lazy description of evolution you could possibly think so of. So those, goes... those were the good emails that Some you said people have previously. Done the opposite. <laughs> we got the good ones out of the way. It's like this guy called Connor Fairbarn says, what happens is, when genes are copied to make a child of species, errors are made. These can be beneficial so the species carries on. That's how it ties in. That's, Love from Connor. That's pretty... That's not a bad description. You know, it sums it up quite nicely. It's not done a bad job there, Connor. It's not, it's not bad. It's better than three pages. Jesus Christ. Who's going to read three pages about evolution? No, no. A biologist well, probably would. Yeah, yeah Richard Dawkins. <laughs> <laughs> what did we actually ask people to email us about? I forget. We... Um... Thanksgiving? Have we got any emails about Thanksgiving? When is th the... When is Thanksgiving? What is it all about? What's going on? There's nobody telling us about this. We've got American listeners, don't we? Why aren't they contacting us? At yogscast at gmail dot com. Come on, you lazy sacks of shit. Put down that double Big Mac and and type an email. Okay, that's not a great exercise regime. Uh, <laughs> no. You probably eat um... at the same time, to be honest. I mean, I, I do sometimes. Uh, you know, a couple of jaffers on the go in my mouth as I'm emailing. This guy sent Sorry. me an email, which is like really, really long. <laughs> uh, well, if you're going to send emails to the Yogpod guys, don't just have a, a huge block of text that takes up my entire screen. Because there's no way I'm going to be able to extract 
what is interesting out of this? I mean, should I just start reading it and see if I can cut it if it's total shit? Well, if people want to email us and they want the emails to be read out, they should keep the emails to the point. They should keep them short and concise. It's like when you're writing letters to a newspaper. Well, I mean, okay. Section, which I imagine nobody who listens to this podcast has ever done. Okay, so... So I don't even know why I mention that. The title of this completely insane letter is Thanksgiving plus killing plus late ghost stories and other stuff that's not important, but it is important that you read out all of this or else I will unsubscribe, not really, but it will make me happy if you read all of it. So that's the title, right? Oh my god. And then the actual email Jesus. goes, you wanted to know what Thanksgiving is, so I will tell you. Thanksgiving is giving thanks to Native Americans for teaching the pilgrims how to grow corn and hunt and all that jazz before the winter, because they would have died if they hadn't been taught that. Really? Apparently. Um, so, the pilgrims... Also you were talking about... No, 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 hang on. The pilgrims that came over to America, none of them knew how to grow crops or hunt. <laughs> they were just completely... Did they not plan for what would happen when they got there? They were like, oh god, what are we going to do? Uh, is there a Tesco somewhere? The Sainsbury's? <laughs> oh fuck. Well, I don't know. Maybe they maybe they just had an unexpectedly <sighs> difficult time or something. Or, or I don't know. Time. It's difficult. A lot of... Uh, you, know, you can imagine a bunch of middle class pe- church going people from middle England just getting into a boat and going off to America, they wouldn't have the first clue about how to, like, having to be self-sufficient, would they? Um, Most people in ye old, ye old good old days... Maybe that's right. That's what they were called, ye old good old days. They knew how to do stuff. They actually had skills that they would use in their daily lives. Yeah, they kept chickens outside. They, they... Yeah, they kept chickens. That's a good skill to have, and keeping they chickens. Them. They knew how to kill their own food. They knew where their food came from. You know. Okay. It's not as though it's... Oh, sorry, go on. Sorry. No, go on, no, go on. I was just going to read the next part of this rambling email. Oh, we've got to get through this, actually, so we should keep the interruptions down, otherwise this is going to be the entire fucking podcast. Okay. It's going to be an hour of you reading this one email. Also, <laughs> you were talking about killing people, and I thought if you got a box, filled it with water, stuck a metal rod in it, then froze it so you had an ice mallet, and whack them over the head with it, and then feed the body to some hungry wild animals like a bear or something, uh, that just ends with a full stop. <laughs> so I suppose... Wow. <laughs> so I suppose that's... I don't think... We shouldn't be rude to him. If he's if he's thinking up kinds of schemes like that, we shouldn't be too unkind. Because otherwise, you know, your back's turned and you get a whack on the head by a large block of ice. His name... I don't know how he's going to lift that. That'd be quite heavy, wouldn't it? Well, yeah, but I suppose... Hmm. It's just a large lollipop that he's banging people over the head with. I also wanted to share a ghost story I experienced when I was... It's too late. Halloween's gone. It's I'm gone. Halloween's gone. We can't do any more ghost stories. Yeah, but it's over. I want to just... I just let me get it's through over. this, all right? Unless it's about Christmas. If it's a Christmas ghost, I'll allow that. But if it's a, a non-Christmas ghost, or non-Thanksgiving ghost, I'm not interested. We'll have to wait until February for the next Halloween Yogpod special. <laughs> <laughs> Spectacular. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I was... So a, a while later, I woke up and saw all these jack in the boxes. Boxes. He saw what? A while later, I, I had fucked up the reading. What? <laughs> oh, he saw what? Oh, Jacket boxes. <laughs> what? <laughs> I read it wrong. Hang on, let me start again. A while later. Jacket boxes. A while later, I woke up and saw all these jack in the boxes. He saw all the he all these all these jack in the boxes floating in the air. But I think it was because I was. Tripping on Robo Tussin. Roby Tussin. What the fuck is that? Oh, no idea. I mean, we shouldn't be surprised that he's, you know, medicated. Oh, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, it's, it's a cough, it's a cold and cough medicine. For children, I think. A children's cough medicine. He was high on yeah. it. So he was That's tripping what, on um, it. Keith Chegwin used to drink Night Nurse. Cause he used to be an alcoholic, and uh, he wasn't allowed any alcohol. Um, you know, his wife wouldn't let any in the house, and they'd, they'd search for it and pour it all down the drain. So he used to go to the chemists and buy night nurse and get drunk on it. Anyway, that's oh man, <laughs> that's a tangent. So, wasn't so this there an weird little man. Story 
this weird little Yognor. He's um he's a child, he's high on cough syrup, and he's looking at a whole load of jack in the boxes. Okay. Floating in the air. Floating? What? So he was like oh oh um, yeah, they were floating in the air. He was like hallucinating, obviously. He also had this recurring dream where I walked into a restaurant that wasn't really a restaurant, but it was actually a big half pipe like you skateboard on. Have you ever skateboarded on a half pipe? I have. Simon? Yeah, I have no. actually. I've surfed a bit too. Um, Dab some. Done some parasailing, a bit of hang gliding, you know. Really? Yeah, where do you think I've been the last week? I would wake up and it would be like when you use your slow down power in fear. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm not quite sure what that means. It's like bullet time Either. or something so, uh, from the Matrix. Yeah, so you'd wake up and you'd have like bullet time. Do do. Oh, that's cool. Um, well, I'm pretty hyper because I just had a bunch of sugar, and that's why this email is so long. Blah, 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 blah. Well, it's getting late where I am, so I'm going to end it here. Okay. So he's taken him so long to write the email that... It's bedtime. <laughs> How old is he? <laughs> he's like... He takes cough syrup, he hallucinates Jack in the boxes, he skates, and he's... He's eaten lots of sugar and it's his bedtime. What the fuck? <laughs> We've got like 11 year olds emailing us. Oh, man. Oh, God. Okay. This guy. Uh, what was his name? One. The guy who just emailed us all that crap? Who's that? Pew, 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 pew. Thank you, I pew, 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 or... for your email. Um, you're banned from the show. Banned. <laughs> <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> Never email us again. Um. Uh, everyone else can email us, apart from uh, Bart. I just went to his MySpace page, mm. where he's made like remixes. Oh God, <laughs> you'll have to play one. Play one in this Let show. Let me make it to you. Hang on. Are they terrible? Please tell me they're terrible. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't had a lot of plays, have they? The one I'm listening to has got 32 play. Oh my God! What the? This is the kind of music that you like and you put on our, our YouTube videos. <laughs> Should use this for the next one. Can you do like a professional DJ style like intro to what, you know, to like a band, you know? You're listening to the Yogpod Hit Mix. Here we have now Tronic with Curb playing now Yogpod. Styly listen. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> that was fantastic. Oh yeah! Ooh 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 ooh. Wicked wah! Wicked 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 wah! <laughs> it's like a sort of 16-bit trance tune. I like it, man. I like this. Don't you like this? I think it's brilliant. We should play it during the show. Let's definitely play this. I'll just I'll, I've edited this into the background, and so this will be playing behind us now. We are playing it. Sorry, wow. I forgot about you, you just edit things into it. We're listening to it now. Yeah. Oh, it's really good. We're like rocking out. See, now I've stopped it, so I'm not actually listening to it. <laughs> oh, God. Chirp. I actually quite like this. <laughs> it's not bad, is it? It's fairly decent, actually. I feel bad about mocking him now. This is Cherb. You're listening to the Yog Pod. Okay, that's all for today. Please send us your musical covers and also your feedback on the recipe Hannah's cooking segment if you were able to cook it based on our terrible instructions and let us know what you think yogscast.gmail.com bye